Nancy Cox, a partner with the Bonadio Group. I'm here with Nick Sinatra. Nick is founder and CEO of Sinatra & Company Real Estate. Uh, Sinatra & Company is a real estate investment, development, and management firm focused on value add acquisitions and development. Thank you so much for joining us, Nick. Um, so before I start asking you questions, I just wanted to give a little background on, on the topic, only because I myself are, am becoming more familiar with it um, in the last few months. And it so happens I walked into my office this morning and I have a um, an article from the CPA Journal. <laughs> it's integrating ESG into small business. So I started reading through it and I just grabbed a couple of things from there that I thought could help explain the topic. So environmental, social and governance, ESG comprises the manner in which a company manages its impact on the environment, treats society and stakeholders, and conducts its business. So in other words, how it governs itself. So relative to ESG, you know, one may ask, who are, who are the organizations actually accountable to? So in this one article, it said basically it's a triple bottom line of people, planet, and profit. And that said, there was a lot of conversation about there's many governing boards, you know, globally that are starting to begin to propose and implement various ESG standards. However, there's still no universally adopted standards for how companies can measure and report their sustainability performance. So there's a lot of, I guess, confusion around the topic. Um, and so, you know, as our group was getting together, we thought it was interesting to see how developers would think of how ESG applies to the real estate sector. So that's the first question that I will ask you, Nick. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Nancy, for, for having me on. This is, um, this is fantastic. So as I think about how ESG applies to the real estate sector, it's obviously wide ranging. Um, for at its, at its core, uh, where real estate sector is building buildings and homes out of the ground, right? So you touch, literally you touch the earth. Uh, as you're coming out with a new construction piece. Um, and so there's some environmental impact right away, and that's been essentially going on for decades in terms of uh, making sure that the environmental impact of, of the project is meets the local code and the, um, the local governance board. But I think over the last 20, 30 years, it has evolved into be more than just that. Uh, a lot of uh, the development that we do these days um, is actually cleaning up previous environmental negative environment, environmental impacts of, of old uh, real estate projects or of uh, companies. For example, in New York State, they've got the New York State Brownfields Cleanup Program, which we've used quite successfully over the last decade. And what that program does is it takes um, tax credits and it, it uses them to incentivize developers like us to take brownfield sites and making greenfield sites and then build something on top of them, uh, uh, something that is that is more desirable and clean, right? So that's one 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 um, area where I, I think ESG is already integrated into, into the real estate sector. But you think about also what it is that you're building uh, as a developer, whether you're building homes or buildings, think about all the environmental impacts there from the water usage, from the electrical usage of that building or home, the, um, the gas or um, any other um, natural resource that's used to power uh, that specific building. So there's a lot there that is that has already been done. But uh, and you think about what can be done in the future. I think that from a water and electrical and gas standpoint, that's probably one of the biggest areas where I could see the real estate sector doing a lot better uh, with the ESG uh, standards over time. And then also. If you think about the construction uh, element of it, and you think about what what powers construction vehicles and what powers um, the the resources, the human and financial resources that it takes to build a building. So on the on the um, human resource side, there's a lot of uh, there's a big movement now in the construction field to see if they could find electric vehicles on the construction side. So you can imagine there's there's uh, a lot more power that goes into um, moving a crane that's required versus moving a vehicle, right? So, so that's sort of a, a, the last uh, EV um, evolution will be in the construction field, in my in my view, because it just sucks so much power 
uh, to, to, to move dirt and to construct a building that that it's it's going to take a very, very powerful batteries to do that uh, on the on the on the capital side. Um, there's a there's a growing sector right now that's ESG fo focused on how capital intersects with real estate, right? Both from a debt and equity standpoint. So there's these impact funds that have popped up that are really focusing their return thresholds on projects that have impact beyond profit, right? So we're working with a company right now called Arcteris Capital out of Boston, and they they are an impact fund that focuses on opportunity zones and very much a part of their underwriting for a project is what what is the um, ES what are, what are the ESG guidelines and what's the positive impact that this project's going to have in, in that community and they target underserved communities by definition because they're working in the opportunity zones so that's more on the equity side on the debt side there's a really great program called CPACE which is being used all across the country and and um, and in parts of New York State that is a debt platform that actually ties the lending platform of of the uh, the debt into the project based on the property tax uh, position of a lien and also uh, but the project has to be used to the green green you know, green up the building right so it has to be used to, for windows and uh, higher efficient windows higher efficient electrical and mechanical systems and better um, HVAC systems within within the structure so it's a great program that is, is now really starting to be widely used. That um, actually plays quite nicely into my next question, which I was going to ask, um, I guess, are you seeing or, you know, do you anticipate seeing uh, sort of um, investors finding an importance with ESG? So so do you think or have you seen, I know you, you mentioned the One Capital Group, um, but will investors sort of uh, have place an importance on ESG in the future, or have you seen that, you know, as of now? It's, it's been a progression. Um, I'm seeing more and more of it every day. I think the natural progression is to have governments responding to the will of the people, so to speak, right? You have public, public perception and public prioritizing this, and then governments respond to it. And certain governments, uh, state governments are responding to it more quickly than others. And then that then creates a, a demand for um, for capital that's aligned with it. So the government programs, economic development programs are put forth and then you have capital that's aligned to take advantage of the capital and, and developers, you know, using that capital to work together on more sustainable development, right? So it's a progression. It takes time. The real estate industry is a very slow moving industry in many respects, right? Uh, just by definition, it's a capital intensive and human intensive business that uh, takes time to actually uh, build a building or build a structure or build a home or get entitlements to do any of that. So by definition, it's a slow moving industry. So it, it, it tends to be um, one of the last major sectors to respond to big movements in uh, macro or, or, or uh, larger initiatives that are happening in other industries like you know technology obviously responds probably the quickest but we're seeing a lot more of it now um these impact funds are really popping up right i think the, the progression was government and then the lenders um because the government forces the lenders to think more about it through regulation and then once the lenders are doing it then you see these investors uh picking up and doing it and teaming up with more um sustainable focused in uh, developers like uh, like like we are. So, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of throwing questions that we hadn't talked about previously, but I'm just, they're coming up as we're speaking, but I'm just curious. So, you know, because I guess you have to react to the way that, you know, things will happen. Are there steps that you're taking now to sort of address, you know, the ESG, I would say, um, in the industry in general, but also in your company? Um, you know, so that when and if there is a, a government something placed on it or a demand, you know, you're kind of ready at that point. Yeah, absolutely. I can speak to our company. We've we've really been ahead of the curve on it. We've been um, working on environmental cleanup projects almost since inception. Um, we've also we've also uh, 
been a leader locally in doing adaptive reuse projects. So uh, you have a, a building that maybe is underutilized or older, and as, as opposed to knocking it down and, and disposing of that waste, you're actually taking that product and you're renovating it and making it into a new uh, sustainable structure. Um, other areas where we have been leaders is we've been leaders really in working in underserved communities. That's been a, a, one of our initiatives. We've been working in opportunity zones in uh, Buffalo, New York before that program even existed. It just was underserved community that we really wanted to have an impact and a broader impact in the community. So we, that was that's where our heart is. So that's where the company um, focused some initiatives. And then along those lines, in terms of where our heart is, we, we really have been working with minority owned contractors before it was sort of popular to do so, before it became um, you know, something that's mandated by governments and, and, and these impact funds. We've been doing it for a long time uh, because it's the right thing to do and it's the right thing um, to redevelop a community, right? We've always believed that if you're gonna redevelop a neighborhood, it's really important to have people from that neighborhood going in there and, and driving hammer and a nail to redevelop that, that specific neighborhood. So we've been driving that home uh, for over a decade now and we're really proud of it and we're glad to see that others in the industry are following suit. Excellent. Um, any other thoughts or, you know, things that we didn't discuss that you wanted to mention? Well, I think, you know, the, the industry is um, still looking for, for clear guidelines to your point. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those uh, hot button topics that everybody's talking about, but it's still very, very much undefined, right? And ultimately, um, capital needs to needs a needs a return, right? And that's that's the one critical component of our business is that you have competitive places for capital to go, whether it's geographic places or whether it's um, different neighborhoods within a certain geography or different projects or different developers. I mean, capital is going to chase higher higher returns with the lowest possible risk, just by definition, right? And that's been that's been the case since, uh, you know, for, for 10,000 plus years, right? So um, that's never going to change, but there, I think, is more um, focus in now on, on some groups taking a second harder look at, okay, well, maybe the highest possible return with the lowest risk isn't really what's driving um, this particular fund or this particular uh, piece of debt. Um, maybe there's a way to look at broader impacts and to measure success from a fund level or from a bank level, or even from a developer's standpoint, measuring success beyond just profits, but you know, what's the impact? So that's, that's I think, the goal of, of um, the ESG movement. And I think there's a lot, a lot more that can be done in the real estate space. There's a lot of interest. There's a lot of groups, developers, capital, brokerage house, I mean, you name it, the whole gamut of real estate industry is really focused in on it. But I think there um, really needs to be a, um, a shift in, in prioritization of, of what defines success and uh, from the highest possible return with the lowest risk to something broader than that. And I think it's going to happen. It's going to happen slower in our industry than other industries, but it is happening. And, um, you know, we're excited to be part of it and to be a leader in that space. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, I agree. I think this will be a topic that is discussed for many years <laughs> um, and it will evolve. But i um, very glad to have you and I'm so thankful for your thoughts. I know you always have good thoughts on on all of the real estate industry topics. So thank you so much, Nick. Um, I appreciate your time. Great. Happy to do it. Good to be here. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.